Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Let's talk about meningitis. How do you make the diagnosis? Well, in order to make the diagnosis, clinical manifestations of patients usually involve a fever, confusion, headache, lethargy, along with a positive Kernick sign, which is um, demonstrated when the patient's uh, hamstrings are flexed and they show severe signs of stiffness or an inability to straighten the leg when the hip is flexed to like 90 degrees. Also keep in mind that um, patients can have a positive Brudinsky sign where one of the physical um, you know, signs of meningitis includes severe neck stiffness which is caused when the patient's hip and knees are flexed. Now the other things you want to look for are nuchal rigidity and um, you know things such as a pur purpuric rash which is seen in meningococcal meningitis or just for, uh, some history from the question such as history of college dorms, military barracks um, those patients are at increased risk for meningococcal infection. Now let's review some of the bugs that can cause meningitis. Bacterially strep pneumonia is the most common in adults greater than 20 years uh, and meningitis is most severely associated with purpuric rash and respiratory transmission. Group B strep is also common. If you have a patient with unpasteurized milk or the elderly, you're thinking listeria. And haemophilus influenza in children less than 10 years of age is common. For fungal infections, uh, Cryptococcus neoformans is very common in chronic meningitis in AIDS patients. Now, what is the exact way to make the diagnosis? Well, lumbar puncture with CSF analysis is definitely needed in order to confirm a clinical suspicion. And before you perform this procedure, um, you have to rule out signs of papilledema, which can indicate increased intracranial pressure. Lumbar puncture is contraindicated in such a setting where the papil where the intracranial pressure is high, and so a CT of the head can tell you that. CSF findings obviously vary, but in general, bacterial meningitis has a low glucose and a high protein and elevated PMNs. The um, other important point is that um, the viral meningitis, also called aseptic, can have normal glucose, slightly elevated lymphocytes. And another fact is that it's important to note the impaired treatment um, should be started immediately. So, you know, as soon as you suspect meningitis, the impaired treatment should be started immediately and you can wait for the results of the CSF analysis to come back, but start the treatment. If you see a lymphocytic pleocytosis with a low glucose, um, then you should think about fungal or TB. Okay, those are the key things. So with bacterial, it's low glucose, high protein, with uh, pleocytosis and high lymphocytes, you're thinking um, fungal and uh, TB. And with viral, it's basically high WBC and a normal glucose. So the uh, lymphocytes, neutrophils, and the glucose can actually help you make the diagnosis and the differential. CSF India Inc. stain is for cryptococcal in AIDS patients. Treatment, the generic empiric treatment is going to be third generation cephalosporin along with vancomycin until the penicillin susceptibility is known. Also ampicillin is used um, and is included in empiric therapy for people who have listeria. And again once the specific organism is identified you can change your treatment. For cryptococcal meningitis IV amphotericin B uh, along with uh, oral itroconazole and for Lyme, ceftriaxone. For TB, you can use the medications for TB along with steroids. And syphilis, it's penicillin. So that was a board review of uh, the common things you should be aware of when treating patients with meningitis. Um, choosing the right uh, diagnostic tool, whether it's CT for papilledema and interior intracranial pressure, doing the lumbar puncture, making sure you start the empiric treatment, and uh, treating the patient based on the CSF fluid analysis, in addition to making sure that you know some of the key signs, the Koenigs and the Brudinsky sign mm, for the board exam. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional lectures and good luck in your preparation.